Number one. A few years ago, when I was either 14 or 15, I went with my mom to the laundromat to help her with, you know, laundry. I don't remember how I was able to bring my bike along with us, because my mom gets twitchy about stuff like that. At one point in time, I wouldn't stop using my wheelies, so she threw them out. I think I was riding in front of the laundromat with my siblings until my mom called us in to help her fold the clothes. So, later on we're done with the laundry. We have a few laughs over my mom struggling to shove the bags into her cart, and we're off. The laundromat is literally on the same street as our house, and it's only a few minutes away. So by the time we're halfway home, my mom stops by her friend's house, a small elderly lady. She asks me if I wanted to sit on the porch with them and drink coffee, but like the little tired twit I was, I told my mom that I would take the rest of the bags home and go to bed. My little brother joins me, and we walk the rest of the way home. We left the bags right by our front door, and we grabbed a phone book and judged how many pages we could flip with my bike wheel. My oldest sister was out cold in her room, so she couldn't open the door, and we got bored. After a while, my little brother gets bored of the phone book thing and tells me that he's going to hang out with my mom. Okay, cool. He asked me if I wanted to come, and I told him that I was going to throw away the phone book first because we had shredded it to high hell. He leaves, and as I'm walking to the nearest trash can, a small minivan pulls up to a red light. I thought, hey, that's normal, just a random driver, until the guy driving pulls down his window and starts talking to me. He was middle-aged, sort of plump, and he was balding. He spoke like a cheery sort of person. Hey, kid, you look pretty cute, he says. I gave him a small, awkward smile and stared at the side of his van to see if there was anybody else inside, but the windows were tinted and it was night out, but it seemed like the man was alone because he didn't look behind his seat or anything. Plus, my prettiness isn't that well developed, so if I wasn't scared, I would have laughed at him. Hey, I think I know you from somewhere. What's your name again? I had a minute-long argument with myself whether or not to use my fake name or my friend's fake name until he asked me again. Sarah, I blurted out. The man nodded his head a bit while he was trying to see whether or not that fit and says, That's a pretty name. And he stops for a split second because a car behind him is waiting for him to move. Hold on, he says, and parks his car right by the curb so he could let the other driver pass and wait for me to walk up to him. I start walking backwards, but slowly, because my house was literally right behind me, and I was praying that he couldn't see the laundry cart. After I took a few steps back, he just left the curb and made a left turn by the corner store across my street. I immediately ran to my front door and started banging it like it was my birthday. My sister opens the door after a few agonizing minutes, which felt like nanoseconds, and I practically shoved everything inside our hallway. I told her about the man in the minivan and how he asked me about my name and how I said something other than my real name, and she said good and told me to tell my mom where she was still sitting with her friend on that porch. I walked past the corner where he had turned, no sign of him. I ran up to the porch of my mom's friend and hastily told her everything in broken Spanish, where she told me to stay with her for the rest of the night. Summer slowly rolled away for school, and the new year passed by. I never saw that man with his minivan again, but I'm still antsy when it comes to thinking about what could have happened on that night. Number 2 this story takes place when I was 15 years old. It was around summertime and my best friend, we'll call her Jay, was staying at my house for the night. We were pretty bored and had nothing to do. It was about midnight and since I lived in a pretty safe neighborhood, I suggested to Jay that we take a walk down to the 24-hour convenience store a few blocks away. She agreed and I gathered a few bucks and we were on our way. 
My parents weren't home that night, and if they were, they definitely wouldn't have let us go. We left our house and started to walk down the street. We made it safely to the store and bought ourselves a few things to eat and drink. We left the store and walked back toward my house. About a quarter of the way back home, Jay pointed out that a black compact car had been following us since we had left the store. Me being me, I told her she was just paranoid and that they probably just lived around here. It had been a few minutes after that when I realized that the car had in fact been following us. I told Jay that we couldn't go back to my house in fear that they would then know where I lived. I pulled out my flip phone and held it to my thigh. Jay asked what I was doing and I told her that I was taking a picture of the car along with the license plate. Jay suggested that we start to run and cut through some backyards to lose the car. I said good idea and we booked it. We cut through about 10 yards till we got to a street I was unfamiliar with. Jay didn't know where we were either so we just walked to the end of the street to catch some street signs. We found that we were a while away from my house but it was nothing we couldn't handle. Feeling pretty good that we lost the creep that had been following us we stopped paying attention to our surroundings and just got back to the usual talk. We were closer to my house now and pretty exhausted when the same black car pulled up next to us. The driver's seat window rolled down, exposing a man in his mid-forties. He explained that he needed help with direction and asked us to help him. Jay asked the man why he was following us earlier and told him it was a bit creepy. The man laughed a little and told us that he wanted to ask for directions, but we ran off before he could stop. Jay walked closer to the car while I kept my distance and asked where he was headed. He said he wanted to get to a friend's house, but couldn't find the street. All possible situations were running through my head of why this guy had actually stopped us. As Jay turned away from the car, the man grabbed her by the wrist. Jay pulled away and yelled, What the hell, man? The man then said that he had a gun and told us to get in the car, and if we didn't, he would shoot us. Jay is now standing next to me, and I whispered to her, Run! If you run, I will shoot you. I took a picture of your license plate, I confidently said to the man. Sure enough, the man rolled up his window and drove away. As we were looking at each other, me and Jay were both thinking, what just happened? We walked home that night being scared to death, knowing that I had just had a good chance of being kidnapped or raped or anything like that. I'm pretty lucky that the man probably didn't have a gun and was really stupid. Don't be stupid and don't take walks at night. Number three. When I was 14, I would spend the summer holidays away from school at home. In the small village I lived in, this meant I mainly spent my days on my own while my parents worked, watching TV and playing The Sims. My parents were generally out of the house from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. I was raised to never answer the door to strangers. However, where I like to sit in the living room, my chair was next to the window anyway, so I could always see people on the street, and they could see me too, I guess. One day, as I was watching daytime TV, I noticed a man walking down our street. As our street is a dead end, I normally recognize everyone who walks down it, but I had certainly never seen him before. He was tall, thin, and unshaven. He was wearing a hooded jumper with the hood up and sleeves rolled up, revealing tattoos on his arms. He was carrying a large duffel bag and looking closely at each house as he passed. As I sat watching him, I was clearly in full view of him too. He started to pass our house and when he saw me, he smiled and turned to come up our short drive. He came up to our front door and knocked. I knew I shouldn't answer the door to someone I didn't know, but he had seen me, and at 14, I was afraid of being rude to an adult. 
so I obediently went and opened the door a crack. I peeked around the door and said hello. As he spoke, he pulled the duffel bag around to the front of his body and asked me if my parents were home. At this point, I thought he would probably leave if I said no, but instead, he stepped towards the door and unzipped the bag. Well, the thing is, I've just got out of prison. I want to do the right thing, you know? It's so hard to find a job, so I'm trying to sell some things. He started pulling towels, handkerchiefs, and other junk out of his bag. The word prison made my heart skip, and I quickly mumbled something about having no money and closed the door. He stood on the step for a minute, still talking to me about being able to help, so I went upstairs and waited for him to leave, which he did. I soon settled back down to watch the TV and forgot all about my encounter. At 5 p.m., my parents came home, and they took the TV, so I went up to my room. A little while later, there was a knock at the door. I came onto the landing and peered down as my mom answered. Two police officers stood on the step. They asked if anyone had called at our house that day. My mom said no one had, and that was when I remembered my visitor from earlier. I came down the stairs and said that actually someone had called. Seeing I was young, the two police officers asked to come inside and talk to me. They asked me to describe the man and the conversation I had with him. They seemed really worried and kept telling me not to worry and to be honest about what had happened. Once I had told them what had happened, they asked to speak to my parents on their own, and then they thanked me and left. I was straight on at my parents, asking what was going on. My mom explained that a few minutes after the guy had come to our house, he had gone to another girl's house. She was in the shower and hadn't answered the door when he knocked. Apparently, he let himself into the house and walked upstairs. When he found her in the shower, he sexually assaulted her. With my description and the evidence from the girl, they tracked the guy down. It turned out he had just been released from prison for a similar attack on another girl. I never answer the door when I am alone now, and I also won't shower when I am home alone. Creepy Mina here of the Worst Nightmare Channel. I hope you enjoyed those three stories of women escaping possible kidnapping and assault when they were teenagers. Comment below if you ever had a similar situation and let us know how you were able to get out of it. So, you know the drill. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video on your favorite social networking platform. Follow me on Twitter as Worst Nightmare 6 for advance notice of all uploaded videos. Send me your stories to creepymina at gmail.com or upload them to any of the many platforms which encourage copyright-free material for small channels such as myself. And always remember to stay safe.